morning, Bridgeway children. Is anyone here? Good morning. Good morning. Okay, I have my son's Lego airplane here. Well, I was corrected today. He said it's a jet. Well, my, my nephew said that. And so he said, you can't say airplane, but can we pretend it's bigger and it looks like an airplane? And so I wanted to ask you, what do we call the driver of an airplane? Can anyone blurt it out? Yes. Pilot. Yes. So what would be the mission of a pilot in an airplane, not the jet? So it would probably be something like drive the airplane safely, get the people and the things inside the airplane to its destination, right? That would be a mission. But I'm wondering, what is your mission? What about you? Do you have a mission? As sons and daughters of the almighty God who is actually here with us today, who created the universe, we are sons and daughters of this almighty God. Do we have a mission as his children? And so today I'm wondering, what is our mission as Christians? Is it to be good? Is it to read the whole Bible, memorize it and never skip a Sunday? What is our mission? Is it never to lie or cheat somebody? Well, today in our curriculum in this month, it's asking this big question. And that question is, what is our mission as Christians? And the answer to that question, I want you to think about it. What is the question? The answer is to make disciples of all nations by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, this is what the Lord Jesus said to his disciples, right? Before he went up to heaven, that's what he told his disciples, to make disciples of all nations. And in today's passage, we learn about Paul's first missionary journey. And trust me, kids, it was not easy. The Bible says that Barnabas and Paul, they were at a church in Antioch, and they were teaching and preaching and encouraging the new Christians, and they were telling them, don't give up, be strong in your faith, and they were teaching them about the scriptures, right? We learned about that. And then, as they were fasting and praying, the Holy Spirit told the believers who were praying, send Barnabas and Paul out to preach the gospel. And so the church heard it and the church sent them out, they obeyed. And so they sent Barnabas and Paul to all these different places to share the good news of Jesus. Their mission was so clear to them, God was sending them out to share about Jesus. You know why? Because when we share, the people that we share it with, they get blessed, they get blessed. And we are asked to bless people. And I wish I can tell you that everyone they shared with loved it, they changed, they became a Christian, but we know sometimes people don't all accept this message with an open heart, right? And so, but regardless of all their challenges, Barnabas and Paul did not stop sharing. They kept on going and they kept on sharing and they did not, and then they did not change the gospel. They didn't water it down they didn't change it for some people here and some people there but they kept on going on their journey and so i wonder if we didn't have people like barnabas and paul we might not even be sitting here today maybe we might not even know jesus right and so we know from today's scripture reading they went to this place island called cyprus and they first went to this side of the island called salamis and when they got there every time they go to a new place you know where they go they go to the jewish synagogues where the jewish people meet and they would start preaching and teaching and telling them there and if the people don't want to hear it they reject it then they go and tell the Gentiles about the good news of Jesus. And they share it with everyone else who is not Jewish. And they kept sp spreading the word. And then they traveled to the other side of the island called Paphos. And once again, they went there and they started preaching and teaching and sharing about the gospel. And you know what? There was a governor and we heard it in today's scripture. His name was Sergius Paulus. He was so intelligent, but you know what? He was so curious. He wanted to know more about what they were sharing. What? You can be forgiven of sins? What? You can have everlasting life if you believe in Jesus? And he was just amazed by what they were saying and he wanted to learn more. So he called them. He called for Barnabas and Paul to come and share the word with them. But you know, as like us or anyone else, when we try to get closer to Jesus, did you know the enemy tries really hard to distract you 
and to confuse you and make it so that we don't hear the truth. And so, of course, there's this wizard, Jewish wizard, and he was there trying to get the governor to not hear what Barnabas and Paul were saying. And so we know in the Bible, it says that Paul, full of the Holy Spirit, he looked at the man in his eyes, and this is pretty scary because I, you know, you, when someone is full of the Holy Spirit, they have a lot of power. And he looked straight in their eyes, and you know what he said? You son of the devil, full of lies and all kinds of evil tricks. You are an enemy of everything that is right. Will you never stop trying to change the Lord's truths into lies? Now the Lord will touch you and you will be blind. For a time you will not be able to see anything, not even the light from the sun. Then what happened, children? This man became blind. He was so lost and he was kind of like reaching out for anyone to help him to get around. Well, the governor saw this, he was amazed. He was amazed at what happened. He was amazed at the teachings and he became a Christian, a believer. You know, boys and girls, Paul and Barnabas, they were called out, they were sent out as missionaries to share the good news of Jesus. And did you know, it wasn't easy. Sometimes they were called names, sometimes they were rejected, sometimes they were physically hurt, they were in danger, but they never stopped. We have a mission as children of God. We are sons and daughters of the Almighty God. And we also have a mission to go out and share the good news. What is this good news about? Well, God loved us so much. He sent his son Jesus, right? To rescue and save us from our sins. That's why Jesus came to rescue and give us new life. Not the old life, not the life that we have now and it's a better version but new life in him, and he came to save us. Jesus paid for it all on the cross, and in return, you know what he gave us? He forgave us, he made us right with God, we are not enemies with God anymore, and he gave us a forever life with him, the moment, the second that we start believing in his son, Jesus Christ. So, I'm thinking when we truly understand what kind of love this is, that you can try everything you want to try to make him love you more, you can't. He loves you too much. He loves you so much he sent his son. And so when we understand this kind of love, it's hard to keep this love to ourselves. We are also ambassadors sent out by God to share this love with everyone. Let us pray. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for your love that's unconditional. We thank you that you send us out also. And Lord, we just pray that you would help us to share who you are and just this love that we have received by the power of your Holy Spirit. We ask that you would help us to experience and understand this love that you have put into our hearts. We thank you so much and we just pray that we would, we would continue to get to know you and continue to be um, so connected to you. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen.